Hiatal hernia is a condition in which the upper portion of the stomach, here, upper portion of the stomach protrudes into the chest cavity or thoracic cavity through an opening of the diaphragm called the esophageal hiatus, through which esophagus passes from the thoracic cavity into the abdominal cavity. This opening usually is large enough to accommodate the esophagus alone. But in certain situation, because of the weakening and enlargement of that opening or hiatus, okay, some other extra organ or tissue may also pass above. And this is, this is known as hiatus hernia. Now, hiatal hernia is a common condition in the clinical practice. By the age of 60 year, up to 60% of the people have it to some degree. So it is not that very uncommon. Okay, many of that, you know, presents with GRD and we, we, we don't take it seriously, isn't it? We think GRD is like a medical condition, but actually who knows, it may be caused by hiatus hernia that is sliding type. It is common in female and there are two major types of hiatal hernia, type one, also known as sliding hiatal hernia and type two known as paraesophageal hiatal hernia. Now let's uh, discuss about them. See here, okay, right now, if you understand the concept, it's very easy for you. The sliding type or type one, as its name implies, occurs when the gastroesophageal junction or lower esophageal sphincter slides up through the esophageal hiatus during the moments of increased pressure in the abdominal cavity. When the pressure is relieved, the stomach falls back down with gravity to its normal position. And this pressure is high because of so many reasons in our abdomen. When we strain, the intra-abdominal pressure would be high. Okay? When we lift some weight, the intra-abdominal pressure will be high. During inspiration itself, the intra-abdominal pressure will be high. When the person is obese, it is very high. During pregnancy, it is high. Any intra-abdominal diseases, you know, it is high. So many causes are there. So uh, high, this uh, sliding type of hernia is very common to occur. On the other hand, the second type, paraesophageal hernia, means the gastroesophageal junction stays where it belongs. It is not going up. It is in its normal anatomical position. But part of the stomach passes or bulges into the chest beside the esophagus. The paraesophageal hernia themselves remain in the chest at all time and are not affected by swallowing. Okay, So the lower esophageal sphincter is maintained. It is doing its function. But the problem here is that some other parts of the stomach is herniated up, mainly the fundic part of the stomach. And it may, it may uh, act like a large mass there, okay? That large mass may compress other structure in the thoracic cavity. Sometimes you know, some aspiration and things like that may happen. And very rarely, uh, if a large uh, you know, organ is uh, gone up, uh, it may again become ischemic. So ischemia can also be one of the problem of paraesophageal type of hernia. Now, to explain everything in a nice way, these pictures are included. So all of you please focus here. This is diaphragm, okay? This is diaphragm. Here is a esophageal hiatus. Now, see here. So this lower esophageal sphincter is shown here. Now, at this uh, picture, this lower esophageal sphincter is present in the thoracic cavity. It is. It has gone up. So this is clearly a case of you know, uh, a sliding type of hernia. It is written normal here, okay? But this lower esophageal sphincter is present somewhere here, you know, at exactly at the level of the diaphragm. Fine. It is shown at the level of the diaphragm, but in case of sliding hernia, it is gone up somewhere here. That's what I'm trying to explain. It is there. But in paraesophageal type of hernia, this lower esophageal sphincter is 
right here in its normal position. So what is gone up then? Probably some part of this sorry stomach, the fundic part is gone up like this. It may form a balloon-like mass in the thoracic cavity. This is the problem there. And the second picture, see this, uh, the lower esophageal esophageal is way up, okay? So here uh, they are showing this is a normal one and this is a sliding type of uh, hydrosarnia. Now, this is a very, uh, you know, um, uh, easy picture than that. It's much more easier to understand. Uh, see here, this is diaphragm. This is the muscle of the diaphragm. This is called esophageal hiatus, okay, through which esophagus is passing and continue as a stomach. Clearly, okay, uh, it is sliding up. And in this case, everything looks normal except a part of the fundus, okay, is pushing the, you know, uh, you know, ligament part of the diaphragm or sometimes it is present right here in the thoracic cavity as well. So this is a paraesophageal type of hernia. So these are the clearly two types. Now, what are the suspected causes or a contributory factor for hiatal hernia? See here. One is age. When a person becomes older, there is muscle weakening and loss of elasticity of the muscle. And the muscle which we are talking here is diaphragm, okay? Because of the obesity, there is constant rise in intraabdominal pressure. It is high most of the time. This is another contributing factor, especially for sliding type of hernia. Poor seated posture, such as slouching, means sometimes we have that habit of slightly you know, stooping forward, okay? A bit of leaning forward. That type of, uh, you know, posture is never good. That will help in the formation of this type of herniation. Frequent coughing because of chronic respiratory disorders like bronchiectasis, lung abscess, tuberculosis, okay? Even bronchial asthma, all of these are, are cystic fibrosis, chronic lung disorders, which may again lead to increase intraabdominal pressure and straining with constipation again lead to increased intraabdominal pressure, which we already talked about. Frequent bending over or heavy lifting, definitely. Hereditary cause, it may run in the family. Congenital defects of the diaphragm, okay, it may, it may be present there, uh, but uh, congenital defects of the diaphragm may manifest much earlier than this. And the conditions such as chronic esophagitis, which already had caused shortening of the esophagus by causing fibrosis of the longitudinal muscles and therefore predisposes to hiatal hernia. Like a cause of chronic esophagitis is GRD itself, gastroesophageal reflux disease causing uh, reflux esophagitis. So what will happen now because of this you know, stricture and fibrosis, the intra-abdominal esophagus is pulled up towards the thoracic cavity. And after this happens, the lower esophageal sphincter cannot maintain its function or the lower esophageal sphincter is now present in the thoracic cavity. So this almost looks like a hiatus hernia. Now, what are the clinical presentation of hiatus hernia? Now, it's very easy. Now, everything is understood well till now. So the clinical presentation listing is quite easy for us. Sliding type of hiatal hernia are more common than paraesophageal one. Okay, see here, 100 to one. So if there are 100 cases of sliding hernia, you will see, you'll probably see only one case of paraesophageal hernia. The lower esophageal sphincter mechanism becomes incompetent in case of sliding hernia or type one. As a result of this, there is a reflux of acid content up, okay, which produces a chemical burn on the esophageal mucosa. So it presents as GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease symptom. Degree of mucosal injury 
due to prolonged duration of acid contact and not a disease of hyperacidity. Definitely, it is a, how, how long the acid is in contact with the esophageal mucosa. It is not a feature of hyperacidity. Hyperacidity may play a role, but the duration is more important here. Continued inflammation of the distal esophagus may lead to erosion, ulceration, scarring, and stricture. Scarring and stricture are considered a severe type of complication of this disorder. Predominantly in women who have been pregnant, this uh, type one a sliding so hernia is more common. Uh, the reason I've only given or told you, one, there is increase in intraabdominal pressure, which is pushing everything upward. Second, because the effect of progesterone, progesterone is relaxing everything, you know, there. So herniation is easier. Men and women with increased intraabdominal pressure also have this. Now, let's talk about uh, type 1 hiatus hernia. It is frequently found in patients who are overweight or obese. Mostly these patients are either overweight or obese. Many patients with type 1 have no symptoms in the beginning, okay? Because for the symptom to occur, reflux esophagitis should be there. And that is a burning epigastric or substernal pain or tightness of the chest. Usually the pain doesn't radiate anywhere. It is worse when the patient is supine or leaning over because there will be easier for the reflux to occur. Antacid therapy improves the symptom quite quickly because it dilutes the acid. A lump or feeling that food is stuck beneath the gyphoid process. What is this, uh, you know, what the medical term for this? If the person feels that there is a mass, you know, a lump, our food is sticking there. It is not going down. What term we use for that? Anyone? Chomping. Yes. What is that? Maybe, you know, in the last class, uh, I have uh, mentioned that. That's why I'm asking. Okay. But don't worry. It will be mentioned again. This is known as globus. Globus. Let me write here. Globus or sometimes we call it globus hystericus. If there are uh, no pathology there or no disease there, but patient feels that something is stuck there all the time, this is a feature of psychiatric illness like anxiety and depression. And we, we call globus hystericus for that condition. But this globus is uh, definitely caused by you know, inflammation here. Alcohol, aspirin, other types of tobacco consumption, and caffeine may exacerbate the symptom. No doubt about it. So consumption of alcohol, aspirin, okay, uh, tobacco consumption, other forms, and caffeine or coffee or tea may exacerbate the symptom. Or even Coca-Cola or those beverages, they also have certain amount of caffeine in them. All, all of them exacerbate the symptoms. Late symptoms of dysphagia and vomiting may suggest stricture formation. This is a type of complication. What about type 2 hernia? Now remember, in type 2 hernia, there is no reflux of the acid because the lower esophageal sphincter is still intact. It is present in the abdominal cavity, or we can say right at the level of the diaphragm it is not gone up, okay, it is in the normal position. So it generally produces no symptom until the insar sarit and become ischemic, okay? If they, if they get stuck there, okay? If they got stuck there and uh, if there is decrease in blood supply, then only there will be production of the symptom. Dysphagia and bleeding are the presenting symptoms mainly of type two hernia which is known as paraesophageal hernia. Now, what is the mechanism of dysphagia here? Just now I explained, yes, anybody can tell me? What is the mechanism of dysphagia in type two hernia? Yes? 
सर इन टाइप टू हनी है देर इज सर पर्ट्रूजन ऑफ द पर्ट्रूजन ऑफ द पार्ट ऑफ द स्टमिक सो सर दैट पार्ट विल आल्सो कंप्रेस द एसोफेगस दैट्स व्हाई सर देयर इज दिस एरिया एक्सीलेंट एक्सीलेंट एग्जैक्टली लाइक दैट आई हैव एक्सप्लेन सो यू नो sometimes your teacher may ask you this type of question just to make sure whether you are listening or not okay whenever the class is going on okay try to listen i know sometimes there is a net problem and things like that okay that is a not in our hand but as far as possible okay, once we are committed okay we should try our best to gain something from the class that what i want now see he is absolutely right the part of the stomach which is gone up may be distended it may acts like a mass and it may give pressure to the part of the esophagus which results in dysphagia okay and it may undergo ischemia as well and it may undergo bleeding as well from there bleeding may occur after ischemia also so all these things are uh, the uh, presentation of paraesophageal hernia but luckily paraesophageal hernia is not very common in comparison to sliding type of hernia now the confirmation of diagnosis of hiatus hernia depends on history taking physical examination and investigation as always so see here the diagnosis is usually suspected based on the patient's history weight loss is a feature due to distal esophageal stricture in the patient it occurs only in the long term you know problem not in the short term and hiatal hernia and reflux esophagitis can be confirmed by fluoroscopy during a barium swallow A fluoroscopy is a is a type of you know con continuous type of X-ray monitoring, uh, which is done after we give barium, uh, you know, and ask the patient to swallow it. Okay, clearly, you know, the barium uh, is seen there uh, in the thoracic cavity side. Okay, which is better explained by uh, these pictures. Now let's see. See there. This is the anterior posterior and lateral view. on the chest radiograph showing a large hiatal hernia okay large hiatal hernia now uh, see here this is not a barium swallow x ray barium swallow x ray will be shown a bit later with chest x ray uh, but how can i suspect it now see this this is a cardiac shadow okay cardiac shadow so it is the thoracic cavity so now there are some air shadow present here okay, air shadow present Now, why this air shadow is present there? That's the question to be asked. And another in the lateral view is clearly seen. So some of the abdominal organs have herniated up. And that's why this type of shadow is seen. And it is confirmed by barium swallow X-ray. Now see this. This is the barium study showing a sliding type of hiatal hernia. Here is the diaphragm. Okay. These are the gastric mucosa fold, which I'll call rugae. this is the herniated part and here is a gastroesophageal junction so clearly a part of the stomach along with gastroesophageal junction have gone up towards the thoracic cavity so this is a sliding type of hiatal hernia this is a beautiful you know uh, x ray picture of barium study another one now see here okay this is gastroesophageal junction And this is hiatus hernia. So, which type of hiatus hernia is this? Yes, which type? Paraesophageal hernia. Paraesophageal. Exactly. Okay. There is no doubt left now. So, this has to be paraesophageal hernia. If this is sliding type of hernia, then this gastroesophageal junction is gone somewhere here. This is paraesophageal one. Very good. so esophagus trick uh, esophago gastric endoscopy and biopsy of the inflamed esophagus may be done okay endoscopy can be done here but important test rather than endoscopy is barium swallow study and fluoroscopy manometry means pressure measurement can also be taken okay in the lower esophageal sphincter side okay so manometry may show a loss of the lower esophageal high pressure area means the pressure is less there it is relax or lax there and that's why it has a high chance of herniation up now the final part is treatment 
see there treatment can be discussed under two headings medical therapy and surgical therapy now, what are the medical therapy we like to do avoidance of gastric stimulants like coffee tobacco alcohol okay or smoking and all those things elimination of tight garment that raise intra abdominal pressure such as girdles or abdominal binders these are also not preferable here just to decrease the intra abdominal pressure that's it the two things here one decrease the uh, you know amount of acid production by changing some of the lifestyle decrease the weight also and decrease the intra abdominal pressure so these are parts of the you know medical therapy these should be told to the patient along with them the drugs okay like antacid as to blocker or ppi okay are routinely prescribed and metoclopramide okay or cisapride these are the drugs which are given and they stimulate the gastric emptying they are anti emetic agent we all know that but along with that they also uh, you know act uh, as a gastric hurrying agent or gastric emptying agent means the uh, gastric content is quickly going distally after use of this drug and some of these drug also tighten the lower esophageal sphincter so these drugs are commonly used in this situation metoclopramide domperidone or cisapride let's move on now abstinence from drinking or eating within several hours of sleeping this is very very you know strongly okay delivered to the patient because this is one of the you know important cause of uh, grd which is associated with sliding type of hernia sleeping with the head of the bed elevated to reduce the nocturnal reflux important point weight loss in obese patient we should encourage the weight loss by dietary control and physical exercise and about one third of the patient fail to respond to the initial medical treatment and half of those who initially respond will ultimately relapse and then they require surgery exactly like grd like in the case of intractable you know type of cases where medical therapy fails when the patient doesn't respond we have to go for surgery what are those surgery ones see there in surgical therapy we correct the anatomical defect okay of that esophageal hiatus prevent the reflux of the gastric acid into the lower esophagus by reconstruction of a valve mechanism that means lower esophageal sphincter mechanism is restored again because that is the main problem especially in type 1 so to to do this okay three major types of surgical procedures can be performed they can be performed by open laparotomy or with laparoscopic approaches laparotomy means you open the abdominal cavity by the conventional way okay give incision on the entire abdominal wall and open it laparoscopy is with the help of laparoscope instrument now what are the indication first and then we'll we'll talk about those different types of surgery surgery is necessary only in the minority of patient with complications of grd despite aggressive treatment with ppi you can also say ppi fails here severe or recurrent complication of grd such as stricture ulcer which can bleed okay who cannot afford lifelong ppi treatment or would prefer to avoid taking medication long term there may be surgical candidate so many people are like that uh, in in our community or society we don't want to take the medicine life long we think whenever we take medicine we think we are not fine you know that type of feeling comes inside so once surgery is done it will uh, you know cure the process of disease isn't it so surgery is preferred by some of the people but some other they are very afraid of surgery people are also like that they are really afraid surgery means they think i am not going to survive now 
people may think like that and we cannot you know convince them even after good counseling so for them yes medical therapy is the only way so we have they are ready to take medical therapy as long as possible if pulmonary complications are there in particular asthma recurrent type of aspiration pneumonia chronic cough or hoarseness remember all of them are associated with reflux of the acid these are known as extra esophageal symptom and these are considered a serious one so surgery should be done as quickly as possible now the important surg surgical therapy here are nissen fundoplication now nissen fundoplication fundoplication means you you make that you know stomach to remain you know towards the uh, abdominal cavity don't allow it go upwards the nissen fundoplication is performed laparoscopically okay and it has gained popularity because of its lower morbidity and shorter hospital stay compared to the open procedure performed previously so laparoscopic procedures are always uh, considered you know easier than the laparotomy procedure laparotomy is considered a big surgery this procedure involves 360 degree fundic wrap around the gastroesophageal junction and the diaphragmatic hiatus also is repaired now two things they are doing here one okay the fundus of the stomach is wrapped all around the gastroesophageal junction so the the amount of you know tissue there will be more at the same time they also repair the loose uh, you know uh, esophageal hiatus through which esophagus is passing when they combine these two things together nothing can go upwards now a transthoracic approach may be used in patient who have had a previous nissen wrap or those who have an irreducible hernia a bit of complicated condition laparoscopic procedure may not be successful so a trans thoracic approach may be necessary means you open the thoracic cavity now and this is nissen fundoplication you see there there are some pictures which are uh, you know included here just to explain it nicely you see this this is nissen fundoplication look at the fundic part of the stomach it is wrapped around the lower esophageal sphincter okay nissen fundoplication when we look from the side it it looks like this another is belsi mark 4 cardioplasty and another is a hill fundoplication these are other uh, types of surgery okay so let's talk about that belsi mark 4 fundoplication this operation involves a 270 degree wrap in an attempt to reduce the incidence of gas bloating <laughs> incidence of gas bloating and post operative dysphagia to complete this operation the left and right crura of the diaphragm are approximated now why uh, this uh, surgery is done you need to understand here if they completely wrap 360 360 means a circle you know full circle so probably that area is very narrow now and uh, you know there would be a bit a bit of uh, distension uh, gas may not pass upward a bit of small channel is created so all those problems are there so to avoid those problem 270 degree wrap is done this is a bit of modification of nissen fundoplication and this is known as belsi mark 4 fundoplication just know the name you know sometimes in mcq exam they may give this type of option all of the followings are the surgical treatment for hiatal hernia except one one condition is given which is not used here okay but we should know the name isn't it then only we can solve that type of question hill repair is another one in this procedure the cardia of the stomach is anchored to the posterior abdominal area such as the medial arcuate ligament this is the you know medial arcuate ligament of the diaphragm okay uh, so uh, again by doing this nothing can go upward 
So Nissan fund duplication, Belshi Mark for fund duplication, and Hill repair. These are the three. Now see here, this is Belshi Mark for cardioplasty or fund duplication, you can say, and this is Hill fund duplication or Hill repair.